Do you love to sometimes just play with your linker cubes? We've been playing with the linker cubes and we built a little city and we did it just for fun. Even though these are great tools for learning our numbers with, they're also just great to have fun with. Great building, everyone. Here's a challenge for you. Take a quick peek at the cubes I have on the table and see if you can figure out which one of us used more cubes for the building of our little city buildings. Grab your things and we'll get started. Today, we are going to talk about subtracting numbers close to 10. So I'm starting off with an equation that really has a 10 in it. If you have an equation like 35 minus 10, what, how do you think about it when you go to solve it? Probably most of you can solve it in your head. Do you think of just 10 less than 35 gives you 25? We can look at that even on our hundreds chart. Let's find 35. Do you see it? Okay, so in order to subtract 10 using the chart, we just go up to the next row. There we go. 35 minus 10 equals 25. I think that's pretty manageable for most of us to remember, right? Okay, but that's not what we're working on today, so hang on. What if we have 35 minus 9? How can you use the idea of 35 minus 10 to help you solve for this one if this one feels a little tricky to you. I think that's a great idea. How about if you go back to your 35 minus 10, which we know is 25, but in that case we took away one too many because 10 is one more than nine, so we just would have to add that one back in. 35 minus 10 equals 25 plus one more gives us 20. Six, nice job. Let's look at another one. How about this one, 80 minus 19? Is 19 close to a number in the tens? Yeah, it's so close to 20, isn't it? And again, we're talking about a difference of one. So let's say 80 minus 20 plus one. 80 minus 20 gives us? That's right, 60, and add one more. And you get 61 for your answer. See how this works so nicely? Okay, let's do a little something more challenging. Alrighty, so though my numbers are a little more challenging, I'm still going to use the same concept. And you'll notice when you're working um, in your books that there are lots and lots of problems like this. And sometimes we say, oh, why so many? Why do I have to do so much practice? But I really just want you to get this cemented in your mind so it comes back to you later on when you're not working on this unit. But when you see an equation like this, you just say, oh, hey, 17 is really close to 20. So I can think of this as 83 minus 20. But 20 is how many more than 17? It's three more. So we have to add that three back in. So 83 minus 20 gives us 63. Let's add three to that. And that'll give us 66 as our answer. See how that comes in handy? Okay, I've got a few more for you. We're gonna look at a different kind of strategy next. For this equation, as in so many equations, there are actually different ways we can solve it and even with this idea of trying to get to the closest 10. Um, so in this case, let's talk a little bit about just identifying the 10 in here and making a little number bond. There we go. 
Let's do 95 minus 30. What do we get? Get 65. All right, but we're not finished yet. We still have to take seven away from 65. Now, you might just be able to do that in your head or you might pull um, a 15 out of here. And then you've got your 50 over here. So many different ways we can go. Do our 15 minus seven gives us eight. Put that together with our 50 and we've got 58. If you don't know 15 minus seven, you can think of it as, let's pull 10 out, because that's easiest for us to think about. But then that means on this side we have 55. Then again, 10 minus seven gives us three. Putting that together with our 55 gives us our final answer of 58. Now I wanna remind you, I'm showing you different ways because for different students, different ways will click. So teachers, you're thinking, why do we need all these different ways? My one child likes it this way, but we're really trying to teach a lot of different kids at once. And kiddos, while all these steps feel, um, well, they just feel like a lot of steps when we're doing it, Eventually, this will happen pretty automatically in your brain. So we're practicing this method so that later your brain will just pick this up and you won't write any of this down. You'll just do it. I'm gonna show you another way that I think makes really good sense for the exact same um, equation but going in a, in a different direction. Okay. In this way, the 10, the group of 10 that I'm gonna think of, I'm actually going to get out of my 95. I need to get something bigger than 37 to work with. So what's close to 37 is 40. We'll take that out. And that will leave me with my 55 over here. Now my 40 minus my 37 is just one step. There's my three. Do you remember where we were just a minute ago? We get the same answer, 58. A couple different ways that we can work at it. And it'd be great, teachers, if you can have your students literally do it both ways and say which way do you like the best? Because when we're learning these different strategies, that's, that's really our goal, is what way is working best for my student. Now, just one other little, um, method I want to show, because you'll see it, if the, those of you who are doing the textbook and workbook, you'll see it in there and I want you to understand what is being shown. And then we're gonna play a quick little game. This method is exactly what we've done a moment ago, but I'm gonna show you a little different way to show it graphically, just to organize the information in your thoughts. 49 is really close to what number in the tens? It's really close to 50. But another way we can show it if we're not ready to hold that in our minds is to use the little arrow that I think we've um, looked at before. Let's show what we're doing up here. This is our, our partial work. 86 minus 50 gives me, you got it, 36. I love when you call those answers out right to the screen and I know your teachers at home do too. But we're not finished yet because when we subtracted 50, we took one too many away. That means we need to put that one back in to get an accurate answer, which is 37. So you'll see that method in your books as well today. Okay, you ready for a little game? I think I've got some friends here who might wanna help me. All right, let's see. Gonna shuffle my cards. I'm gonna shuffle your cards. My deck of cards, as usual, has all the face cards removed and all of the tens removed. And uh, you could play this with one other friend or family member or two or three, four, whatever you like. But you're just going to split the deck. So let's see, which one of you wants to play? Snail says, I wanna be the player. Moving along just like a snail. All right, here's what we do. We're each going to turn over three cards. There's my three. Go on, snail. 
Sometimes snail needs a little bit of help. So what snail and I are each going to do is identify the highest card that we turned over. For me, it's the seven, and for snail, it's the eight. Now that we've identified that, I'm just going to slide our cards this way. And snail, your equation, remember how we, I said let's, let's take the high card out, separate the high card? That's because we're gonna add a zero to it. And so now this is 80 minus 73. I have 70 minus 36. And each one of us gets to work at trying to solve and I can decide ahead of time the one either with the lower number or the one with the higher number wins. In this case, I'm gonna say the one with the higher number wins. Do you know how to do 80 minus 73? That's right, this one we can just think of 10 minus three equals seven. Got it? So our 80 minus 73 equals seven. For me, I have 70 minus 36. Now remember how we've talked about, we might wanna think about the closest 10. So maybe I'll say, I'm gonna get 40 from my 70 and 30. And I'll say 40 minus 36 gives me four. Put that together. I have an answer of 34. So, oh my goodness, it looks like I have the higher answer today, so I get the cards for that round. But Snail, don't be sad because we are both winners because anytime we're practicing and learning math together, that definitely works in our favor. All right, so we'll just keep playing here and I hope you'll finish your workbook and textbook and then you play the game at home as long as you like to keep practicing working on subtraction. Have a great day and I'll see you here next time.